Hi, and welcome along to the 10th and final in our series of Container Security Fundamentals videos. In our last episode, we took a look at Linux mandatory access control systems, and specifically AppArmor, and how those are used to provide an extra layer of isolation for Docker containers. In this episode, what we're going to do is we're then going to move on to what is probably the last layer of isolation that Docker containers use, which is seccomp filters. A seccomp filter is quite a fine-grained mechanism for security. What it does is it helps isolate specific Linux syscalls, so you can block or allow specific syscalls for a Linux process or a Linux container. This lets you be quite kind of like particular exactly what you want to allow. There are over 300 different syscalls available that can be filtered using seccomp, and notably, these syscalls differ depending on the hardware architecture. So there's a different list of syscalls depending on whether you're running an ARM CPU or running an Intel or AMD CPU. In Docker, what you get is a default seccomp profile, which is applied to every container. This profile was developed by Docker over a period of time to try and work out what syscalls were dangerous and could be blocked um, without necessarily impacting on the operation of the vast majority of applications. And in my experience, it's worked pretty well in, in, in that goal. It has blocked several Linux CVEs, but it doesn't, in my experience, tend to interfere much with the operation of people's containers, which is exactly what you want from a security mechanism. What we'll do is let's take a little bit of a look at exactly how Docker and containers in general use seccomp in their day-to-day -day operation. So we'll bring up our terminal, and as ever for this series of videos, we have our standard Linux host running Docker. To demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a standard container first. So just a standard Ubuntu 2204 container. I'm then going to try and use a program called Unshare. Now the Unshare program creates a new Linux namespace and by default is blocked by the second filter as it uses the Unshare syscall, which is one of the ones which is not allowed because it, it can present security problems. So if I run the Unshare command, we get back operation not permitted, which is exactly what we expect. That's the second filter doing its job and blocking that syscall. So let's show what happens if we actually don't have that, just to kind of prove that it is the second filter doing the job, because we've talked about lots of different layers of isolation that Docker provides. So let's just kind of show exactly which one's making the change. So if we run this, we are essentially what we're doing is passing in a security option to Docker, and we're saying seccomp unconfined. This removes the seccomp filter from the running container. If we now then run our unshare command to create a new namespace, we see that that works. So essentially it was the seccomp profile doing that job, and we've now removed it. A very important point to note from a container security perspective is if you're using Kubernetes, this seccomp filter is actually disabled by default. This is something the Kubernetes project does. It removes the seccomp filter for compatibility purposes. So if you are looking to improve the security of your Kubernetes environments, a recommendation that I would always give is that you re-enable that seccomp filter. Um, and, and you know you can test and make sure it's not going to interfere with your specific containers. Um, you do that essentially at the workload level, and there is actually a feature in development in Kubernetes that will allow you to do that by default on a you know, host basis as well. But right now you do need to put it into each workload you create. So it's definitely something I would look at. Just kind of mention that one essentially in passing. We can actually play a little bit more with seccomp filters by looking at what happens if we create a custom seccomp filter. So if you want to, for example, block specific syscalls that you don't need, or perhaps you have a workload that needs specific syscalls, um, what you can do is you can actually say, I'm going to have a custom uh, profile, and then I'm going to apply that to my container. In the way with Docker, the way it works is we just specify that as a parameter to our Docker run command. And you can see here what I'm doing is I'm adding in this filter here, which I've called default no chmod. And what I've done here is I've essentially got the Docker default filter and I've removed one syscall. So the Docker default filter essentially is a long allow list of all different syscalls that are allowed. So if you remove one from that, it essentially becomes disallowed. So if we do that, we can demonstrate that, it, that it's had an effect. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to do chmod777 slash etc slash password. And it says, nope, that is not allowed. However, that's even when I'm the root user. So even if I'm the root user here, 
with the syscall being blocked, it doesn't help me whatever permissions I've got because the syscall literally can't be made and essentially is blocked. So it is kind of a good last layer of defense um, for your containers. So hopefully that's kind of a quick look at some of how you can use second filters in Docker and some of how they work um, in their default configuration as well. This essentially brings us to the end of our series of videos on container security fundamentals. Just to give you a quick recap, what we've done over the course of our 10 videos is we've looked at the idea that Linux containers are just processes. And then what we've done is looked at each of the layers of isolation that are applied to those processes to provide security and isolation for them. We've also talked about how you can use Linux features to actually um, modify those and actually inspect them. So in a lot of cases, you don't need to use container tooling. You can actually just use um, you know, ordinary Linux tooling as well. As ever, if you'd like to find more information, you can find that on our Security Labs website. And that'll be linked down in the description below. In our next video, we're going to kick off a new series. And what we're going to do is build on this foundational container security knowledge that we've been working on and actually then add into it Kubernetes. Because a lot of people, when they're running containers, they're using Kubernetes and there is quite a lot to cover. So I very much look forward to seeing you in that next video.